Blockchain Insiders. Thank you for being with us this morning, Friday morning, November 8th. Uh, two weeks from the big move uh, inspired by China. Uh, China has been the news story, so let's start there. Uh, we're calling them blockchain wars around the office. It seems like we are having currency wars and digital currency wars, uh, to be more specific. China's move into blockchain technology. Who wins? Who loses? How do we make money on this? Who wants to start? Uh, Ms. Keels. I'm going to share an article from China's president. Um, this article just states that he wants his country to take the leading position in the emerging field of blockchain. So in this, you can see how they rank currencies. Um, EOS being number one followed by Tron and Ethereum. So this list, how many coins are on this list? 36, 35. So these coins have favored status in China. I Where's would... Bitcoin on that list? Now that's kind of interesting, right? Where Bitcoin Bitcoin's ranked number 11 on this list. Why do we think that? Let's talk about that one for a second. Because it's, uh, it's decentralized and like privacy and like China, China's like out there authoritarian government they like to control like the narrative and with bitcoin they can't do that so that's why it's lower on the list compared to like eos which is kind of more like a permission blockchain where they can control it more tron same thing ethereum is china also likes the ethereum aspect of it or likes ethereum because of the smart contract capability which would help out their businesses and um stuff like that you know jake i think you i think you're alluding to what something is very important um china's ec economy and their culture and we think of those here in the western world as two very distinct things it's not in china everything wraps into one this is this is a a, a, a culture economy and currency is a part of it right so I, I wholeheartedly agree that the decentralization aspect of Bitcoin brings it further down the list. And if you have, you know, if you're taking in stock of what China is doing in terms of population control, let's call it what it is, smart contracts, infrastructure plays, those types of controllable, centralized, immutable validation mechanisms are gonna be very important to the Communist Party of China, right? Making sure that you've pledged your annual allegiance to the Communist Party, making sure you're following all the local rules as part of your social credit scoring system. And even just last night, Chinese authorities put out a, uh, put out a rule that kids can't be on video games past 10 p.m. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We had this yeah, with my family growing up. <laughs> you don't think that's going to be on a smart contract system at some point to make sure Junior is not sneaking up at light, late at night and he won't be able to get in? You know, a trustless system, a system that doesn't require trust because things are immutable and enforceable on blockchains, uh, that does seem to fit into a communist uh, political system, now that you point that out, John. Yeah, and let me talk about some of the implications of this too. We have we have the list. Um, maybe before we get into the implications, Jacob, do you want to talk about any of these specifically on here? Because some of them are a little bit new, maybe for our viewers. Um. So Neo is a Neo is like a blockchain that goes after enterprises and businesses, and it's permissioned. And like we talked about with the. Uh, decentralization and how China doesn't like that. NEO is like one of the top coins. Um, it's ranked number nine. One of the cool things I like about NEO is it's got, um, so it has virtual real estate, which is what I think is really cool. It's similar to Decentraland. They just launched that about a month ago. And I think it's an interesting, um, yeah, thought experiment about virtual real estate. We know NEO has been the Chinese Ethereum. It's been being called. I'm surprised to see it so far down the list, number nine. So mm -hmm. coins like Steam, which we don't hear a lot about ahead of NEO. Um, maybe they're trying to 
divorce themselves from Neo in some ways. And they do mm -hmm. seem like they're picking up Tron as their new favorite, uh, you know, gold, golden son, uh, no pun intended, Justin's son, is that the, the lead developer yeah. there? Yeah, it is. His picture, his, his uh, handsome face is in the literature published by the People's Bank of China, uh, showing an example of a smiling person using blockchain technology. So what's the deal with Tron in China? Anyone want, want to comment? It had a big move, you know, on, on these rankings and on China's announcements. Proximity, Pro, you know, proximity, and I think alignment, alignment of values, creating a sort of a a a, a polar um, alternative to New York, right? In our traditional economy, New York and the in Wall Street, the New York Stock Exchange represents you know, represents finance and rep represents economic transaction. China sees the future of this being on the blockchain and they're gonna invest in, uh, you know, they're gonna invest heavily in an exchange that is not just central to China, but has Chinese values that can be exported internationally. Bitcoin mining in China. China has um, an advantage of economies of scale on this, all right? So if China were to ban Bitcoin, this would be a big problem for the market, right? 70% 70, 70 of Bitcoin's hash rate is controlled by China. That's significant. If that stops, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a giant bear crawling, in, crawling into Bitcoin. Um, that's gonna present a lot of long-term downside for people. Well, you know, we, we've seen basically China, China like uh, they were, being coy about their intentions. And then last week they announced that they're all in on blockchain technology. It's against the law now to slander blockchain technology. Uh, they've invited Binance to open an office in Beijing and uh, they've indicated there, there's 11 types of financial um, programs that are gonna be certified by the state in regard to cryptocurrencies. And they've got like their electronic digital currency project, which is gonna be basically like an international uh, transaction coin for so when china's selling goods and service or goods uh they don't have to use u.s dollars to sell uh tankers full of you know things that they make in china exactly do you know why this is so high besides maybe some of the like the political motivations if you're a centrally controlled economy you have a primary duty resource allocation and management that's it it makes sure people can get fed that they are safe and that they have the basic resources they need like electricity. So let's talk about electricity for a second, right? Bitcoin gets a lot of flack because it, it consumes a lot of power, but guess what? Where power is cheap, Bitcoin thrives and power is cheap in China. Yes, it is cheap and it's dirty. Exactly. Because here's reason too. It's all coal. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I've been to China's countryside and uh, it smells like, it smells like that, like Ireland, like they're burning peat and yeah. on your on your stuff if you leave it outside overnight and everyone dies of lung cancer. So they have a trade off. They're getting cheap electricity. You know, they're destroying the, the globe and the environment and killing themselves in the process. But, you know, at least they're mining a lot of Bitcoin.